Hey everybody, I am Sarah. Welcome back to Overkill Reviews. This is Banger's pandemic style weekly review show where uh, we talk about records and uh, we hope that you stay home. Practice empathy and be nice. You know, everybody's going through some shit. This stuff is hard. Before we actually jump in to the review, Everyone at Banger would like to extend our sincere gratitude to the guitar god Eddie Van Halen, who sadly passed away earlier this week after a battle with cancer. Eddie, rest in power. We want to thank you for providing the soundtrack to our lives as heavy metal fans. Now, we should probably get into the uh, more Banger related things. Join our Patreon, send money to us, subscribe to our channel. That way you can get fresh reviews every single week most of the time kind of and on that note this week i am reviewing the highly anticipated second album by a one man blackened speed metal band hailing from aberdeen scotland <laughs> That's right, we are reviewing the second studio album by the blackened speed metal band Hell Ripper, The Affair of the Poisons, and it is out October 9th via Peaceville Records. Hell Ripper are a blackened speed metal band that formed in 2014. Everything in the band, the guitar, the vocals, the uh, bass, the drums, everything is written and played by band mastermind James McBain, who is in multiple other projects. He is in a death metal band that is called Lord Rot, a metal punk band, Rats of Reality. And he is also in a killer gothic post-punk band called Lock Howl. You can check all of those projects out via Bandcamp. Links in the video description. It kind of goes without saying, I think it's obvious. McBain is massively prolific. And once the new album comes out, he's going to have 13 releases under the Hell Ripper name. And that includes the very highly uh, received other full length, debut full length, which was 2017's Coagulating Darkness. That one went on to be released in multiple formats by multiple labels. For the new album, James signed a deal with Peaceville Records. And it's because he's got that modern, rollicking, blackened speed metal sound down pat. Hell Ripper sound like an amalgamation of Nocturnal, Aura Noir, Nefelheim, Sabbat, and uh, those bands were obviously inspired by the first wave. And by first wave, I mean by the first round of bands that they amalgamated, which is Venom, merged with Early Bathory, Celtic Frost, Motorhead, Sacrifice, and Exciter. So now we are in the bonafide second wave of black and speed metal because the first wave was bands like Nefelheim and Company who formed in the 80s and the 90s have put out lots of records and now we have a second wave and it is made up of bands like Midnight, very crowd pleasing, Black Rat, Cruel Force, Dieva, Death Hammer, Butcher, Force of Darkness, Sauron. So where does this leave us? Does Hell Ripper match or even supersede the songs heard on their 2017 debut on the new album? Let's find out. So Black and Speed is definitely riding a high. It's not a massive subgenre, but I personally think that it's a very strong one. And the reason why I say that is because it's basically the equivalent of coffee for me. It's fun, it's rapid fire, it gives me a massive buzz of energy. This is a genre that does not take itself particularly seriously. It's a B-movie blood orgy of sex and violence wearing a black hood that is heavily inspired by, you know, as I said, the Venoms of the world, the Motorheads of the world, and the Celtic Frost of the world. Now, I have to say Celtic Frost again because Celtic Frost ooh, and Black and Speed Metal is defined by the oos. And you know that ooh. It is an iconic heavy metal thing that has been re replicated by thousands of bands. And fittingly, this Hell Ripper album immediately kicks off 
with a heavily delayed <laughs> and then goes into a mountain of riffs. From that first moment, this album never really lets up. There's constant soloing, there's shrieking vocals that like work extremely well in unison with the guitars. There's hammer-ons and pull-offs with those like very Motorhead-esque riffs. You know, that's got that speed, it's got that aggression. As a result, this record is enormously enjoyable and had me feeling really nostalgic for a particularly violent midnight mosh pit that I was once in, where Athenar decided to kick me in the face. <laughs> Take the track, Blood Orgy of the She-Devils. It's basically a B-movie ridiculous romp, and it really brings that feeling to life. The squealing solos in Vampire's Grave are this perfect reprieve from the madness, uh, which then, you know, nicely transition right back into the melee. The apex of this song with the soloing and the vocals and everything in unison is really quite perfect. Finally, my personal favorite track is the closing song. In my not so humble opinion, the track The Hanging Tree is the best on the album because it's just got this extra dollop of atmosphere and this infectious groove. And while it is more simple, I think, than most of the other songs on the album, it you know, you sometimes just need to take a step back. And on this track, you get the closing song and the ending in particular. It's such a great way to finish an album. It's poignant and it gets quite sparse. It's got these little like guitar ditties and then it eventually kind of like trails off. And it's a really cool way to end an album that is just all energy, all the time, all fist pumping, all fucking black and speed metal. It's really enjoyable. All told, in terms of comparative analysis from the debut, this album to me feels richer and fuller sonically, which I think was an aesthetic choice. And it makes sense because the previous album, Coagulating Darkness, was drier and sounded a bit more in line with the production that you would hear on an old school uh, death metal album, which makes sense because Damien Herring of Horrendous produced that album. And this one sounds like wetter and thicker, which I think is a better fit for like black and speed as a genre. And so that's to me the most noticeable difference. And it's also one that really works. I feel like I've said this a lot since the pandemic has started, but I don't have that many complaints. I, I don't think that this album, you know, it's, it's not particularly reinventing the wheel, but it's a very competent take on the blackened speed metal genre. If you are a fan of the genre or if you're a newbie, I think that you will find something here that you will really dig. So what does all this mean for a rating? Let's find out. Right now we're living in this like pandemic ridden, dumpster fire burning world. And that is something that I think we can all get on board with. It's something that is fun, that is enjoyable, that works, that is a competent um, exercise in a specific genre that is really quite fun. For all these reasons, Hal Ripper's second studio album, The Affair of the Poisons, is getting four skulls out of five here on Overkill Reviews. And yes, I have had um, an elastic on my finger this whole time. <laughs> shout outs. I am stoked about there being shout outs because uh, I don't get to talk about Black Thrush that often. First up, the newest release by Diabolic Night. It is called Beyond the Realm. That one is fantastic. You can grab that one on Bandcamp. Occult Burial's newest upcoming album is called Burning Eerie Lore, and it is coming out on October 30th via Temple of Mystery Records. You should be familiar with them. They are a fantastic Canadian record label, and Occult Burial is a Canadian band. They are super ominous, super creepy, and they are great black and thrash speed metal. So you can pick that one up on Bandcamp. I highly recommend it. Third and finally, this is a stupidly fun album that came out in January of 2020. It's by a band called Butcher, which of course has some umlauts on the U. The album is called 666 Goats Carry My Chariot. That one's fun, it's out now. You can get that one on Bandcamp. That's it, that's all, that's all I gotta say. Bye.